everyone and hello everyone and welcome back to my channel and in this video we will be discussing how to study pharmacology in medical school the video the video is divided into three parts the first is all about the books the second will be about my own notes and the third part would be about some online resources that uh, I use and I recommend so we'll start with the textbooks first uh, as I've said before, that for any subject, you need at least three books, a good textbook, a good review book, and a good question book. Now, the textbook would be something that your university recommends or that your university suggests that you use. My own university, my own medical school suggested us to use the Katzen and Travers Pharmacology Examination and Board Review. Now, this is a review book. We also have a Katzen text, which is this huge, that uh, some students do use use but I don't recommend it it's too huge and I, d I never use it as well because I don't think anyone has time to go through that huge of a book during the busy medical school days so I do recommend the Katzen and Travis Pharmacology Examination Board review book not the textbook now uh, it is divided into chapters, into sections, and then those sections are divided into chapters. And all these chapters are pretty small. They're all five to six pages long uh, with questions at the end of the chapters and a summary chart for all the drugs that were given in the chapter. So I think uh, this is a very nice textbook, although I do believe that the concepts in this text in the text are not that well explained and you do need other resources like a good teacher a good professor or some online resources to help you understand the material but after you've got the hang of the material i think this text is really good for exams and it is really good for review so yeah and these charts are absolute gold. These charts are so good, so good to study for your OSPE examinations and for your bylaws. These charts are really, really good. In, in fact, I use these charts way more than I used uh, the actual text. So yeah, I highly recommend buying it and using it once because this is a textbook that I use. The other textbook that is also used widely and is also very, very nice is Lippincott Pharmacology uh, illustrated review series. Now, I, I loved the Lippincott biochemistry book, but for pharmacology, I stuck, uh, I sticked to Katzen, uh, but not, I did not use uh, Lippincott that much. But on the other hand, I had some colleagues who loved using Lippincott, who swear by this book and who say that, uh, who also say that, uh, you know, it is much better than the Katzen one. I cannot comment on the comparison because I truly did not use the Lippincott as much as, as much as I would like to, or as much as I would tell, uh, as much as I, you know, I, I did not use it that much to actually compare both of them together, right? But it is a good book it, because I know that the biochemistry one is really good. So I'm assuming and I'm hoping the pharmacology one is also pretty awesome and has done a good job in explaining things. Uh, but you can use it for the questions and the charts and everything else. And um, it is also widely used in a lot of other universities. My own university is not a huge fan of Lippincott, but it is used in a lot of other South Asian universities. So these are the two textbooks that I recommend for you to buy and you know see what works. And they also work as your question books because they both have questions in them. For review, I have the BRS Pharmacology series. Now, I don't recommend BRS Pharmacology um, in you know the, the BRS series in pharmacology I recommend BRS in almost every other thing biochemistry anatomy physiology but not really in pharmacology I mean you can do the questions uh, that are given in this book but the text is not that good the text really fails um, but but the questions are nice so you can you know do the questions and practice but I don't really recommend it for the text now the book that I use way more than I use the textbooks or even the BRS was this one. Um, I use the Kaplan Step 1 Lecture Notes of Pharmacology a lot. I have them deeply, highly annotated and I made them my core book. 
I made this book my core book, not even my textbook. I made this book my core book and used it very widely. I do not know how are you going to get it because I got them from my senior, but you have to buy the series, video series, and the books come along with it. But the book was really nice. It was really precise. It had all the important things that you need to know for the exam. And it came with some really good questions to test yourself. So this is the book. So these are all the books that I recommend. Now the point is that pharmacology is a lot of memorization, you see. So even though these books would help you understand the material, understand the mechanism of action of a drug, understand its toxicities, but not a single one of them can help you memorize the drugs, you see. So you have to figure out ways on how to memorize a drug. And for that, I recommend making flashcards. Now, I am not a huge fan of flashcards in any other subjects, but I think for um, pharmacology, flashcards can be a real game changer. So I'll show you a few examples of the flashcards that I made on how I memorize pharmacology, and I hope they're helpful to you. So we'll do two examples. So the first one is this one. So as you can see, one side of my flashcard would have the drug name, like Remeltoin and Desmeltoin, and the other side of the flashcard would have all the properties that I should know of this particular drug that are high yield and important for exam, right? So for example, uh, you know, what does it do? What is its mechanism of action? Why is it used? How do we give it? What is the pharmacokinetics? What are the dis toxicities of the drug? And I will make like, this for all the drugs so and for like but this is like one group right two drugs one group the melatonin receptor agonist and then we have bz1 receptor bz disease the azopiclon zalpilon and zalpidam which is something that i that is uh, you know the, the gaba receptors ones the chloride channel opening gaba receptors specific drugs for sleep disorder right for specific for sleep disorder so i have these drugs name written here and then all the properties up here so i would you know use these flashcards i will make these flashcards and use them every single day you know waking up uh, eating something and so that you know i could recall them when the test comes or when the exam comes because although i do know the mechanism of action and i understand the toxicities but that does not mean i would remember the drug when the exam comes so i have to keep on revising it again and again and again and again and these flashcards really really helped hammering down the entire information and as you can see I have like a lot of them. I have a shoebox full of these. As you can see, there is like a ton of these. And you might think that, oh my God, I will never have enough time to revise all of them. But that's not true. You know, once you start making them and once you get in the habit of, you know, using them, you'll be fine. You'll, you'll actually love this technique. Now let's 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 look at the notes. How can you make some notes of pharmacology that, are, that would be actually be helpful to you? Okay, so I'm going to do one only page and not a lot of them. The best way to make the notes of pharmacology is to make sure that, you know, you can uh, categorize the drugs. So, for example, if you have asthma drugs, you have to categorize them. You have to know that for acute, we use some other thing. For chronic, we use something else. For prophylaxis, we use something else. Uh, some of the drugs are for leukotriene-specific. Some are not leukotriene-specific. Some are big -tars drugs. So, the best way to do the notes is by categorizing the notes. Once you categorize them, it becomes so much easier to, you know, make sense of everything else. And I have tried to categorize everything every single of the drugs as you can see you know the antidepressants I've categorized them as you can see right here and every single one I think my best one was of course uh, uh, the, the the diabetes one so I don't I cannot find it here but the diabetes one was basically categorizing it as the drugs that act on insulin you know and the drugs that do not act on insulin and act on the rest of our body so you see by categorizing these drugs you can figure out you can you know pinpoint specific points um, that you need to remember for the drug so you're not in a jungle and lost you have directions so for example for asthma you're not just you know just uh, you know having a verbal diary of all the drugs you can categorize them and you can tell them oh for asthma you have acute drugs and then you have chronic drugs for acute you have this and this which is further divided into this and this and for then each specific drug you can say that this happens when you take this and this is how this particular drug works you know like that, so that you're not lost in a, in a huge mesh of drugs. You know your way out of it. I think that was a little confusing, but 
I hope it makes sense. I can I can give you an example. For example, for asthma, you can go ahead and tell that for asthma you have an acute treatment which consists of a bronchodilator, uh, which is mostly used a beta two agonist. And because it it is acute, we use we need a short acting beta agonist and not a long acting beta agonist, which is preferred in chronic. Then for short acting beta agonist, you can see the names. So instead of just saying that we use beta two agonist, which is short and long, and corticosteroids and methylxanthines and all these drugs at the same time, you have a direction on how how you want to approach the drugs and then you can take each drug out make some flashcards and memorize it so yeah that is how i recommend uh, you know approaching pharmacology and once you get the hang of it once you get the hang of the drugs once you get the hang of the mechanism action once you get the hang of you know what is important what is not you'll figure it out okay for online resources uh I use the sketchy pharmacology videos a lot because they really helped me memorize the names and the side effects by giving all these little diagrams and figures. You can check them out by just typing in Google and writing sketchy pharmacology and you'll know what I'm you know, saying. They're, they're very good, but they're a little expensive. So if you have money, you can spend it on them. Or if you don't have money, you can actually just type in drugs names on YouTube and you'll find some, you know, pictures or cartoons, uh, videos that will pop up and you can use them to memorize. I will link some down below the ones that I used. I will also try to make some of some of my own videos explaining the harder topics of pharmacology pharmacology and I hope that helps. Uh, the next video would be on how to study immunology and I hope this video was helpful. I know it was a quick one I guess or maybe it was long I have no freaking clue but I hope it was helpful and, it, and if it was then please like comment share and subscribe for my channel for more and uh, subscribe to my channel for more and the next one would be of immunology. Uh, see ya then. Good luck.